I'm getting now into the course itself. I assume you have read the course online in www.meditrans.com and uh, you are aware, uh, you know what I'm doing with the four elements and uh, let me go a little bit on front. If you have a device, the ideal device in the budget device is uh, AO1100, which is a water device, but you can also use it to power up yourself. And if you go into states like this, a very low frequency is, is always better. Uh, a similar good one would be the junior with the lowest frequency of 5.9. And uh, I would suggest the AO1100 instead, ex especially for that, because the frequency is it is floating, but it's very, very slow, and it gets you very quickly in that slow state. And similar, the transfer which I gave you will put you into that very, very slow uh, brainwave state, especially when you rest and, uh, rest and later when you are getting into a meditative state. I hope I don't need to wake you up with a big bang, with a big bang going on. <laughs> Or let me, let me make a joke here. Whenever you go to sleep because of that real nice brain wave, just call me and I wake you up. So, I like to make stupid jokes. Another good one is the JO1000, which can be set to 0.6 hertz on a very low frequency, which also is an endorphin release, which helps in this state of mind. And then the other good ones are the LPOG series, LPOG 2400HD, like this one, or the DL, they look the same. And you find that on the appropriate websites on hrcti.net. And, uh, of course, I will get into a few things besides this course, the course I have written before I invented the equipment. And uh, I decided to keep it the way it goes. And uh, with the device, of course, you make that experience appear faster because you get into the brainwave state without your own, without your own effort. And uh, chances are that uh, you can get some of that Buddha, Buddha experience, uh, which I call it, I like to call it Buddha experience. The Buddha had something like this, Jesus had it like it. And we all had it at some point or, or another, this experience. We are, a lot of people are not aware when they get it because they, they don't even know what to expect or what's happening. And, uh, this experience can be achieved, as I said, especially with equipment, without uh, what I call external help to enhance meditation, such as the booze on an empty stomach, which some people do on a daily basis, or, uh, of course, not to get drunk, just to get the state up. Uh, I think the people who are members of that specific religion, they know what I'm talking about. And it works very well. It, it gets the people really into a state that they can preach much better. Or uh, uh, sacred mushrooms or whatever, what some of the shamans use. You don't need it with the equipment because you get into this state and you stay much better in control. Now, the transfer, as I said, will be good even if you have your own machine right now because you, this way you tune into the other people a little bit who do the same thing. And uh, in this evening, of course, I cannot go through, likely I cannot go through all four elements, but you are going to get the essential so you can do yourself the other elements. I will do a follow-up then at some point with persons who are already have some knowledge about it. And then it goes quicker how to get in. I assume you know the course, of course, and if not, then 
study it, listen to this now, of course, study it with this precondition that you know it, and then come to a later broadcast and you get into it easier too. What you are using, you can design your own elements. I mentioned that you can use the Hindu one, you can use the Chinese ones, you can use the 18 runes, or you can make your own. Again, about this, I will talk at some point. Uh, with the 18 runes as a practice, I'm going to uh, promote this at some point. I think I have a, a broadcast later on working with creative energies and uh, join in. I'm going to work with this. I uh, basically everything, this course has some general elements which can be of use just about anywhere. And, uh, and uh, with all the other ones, you can use those general elements. And uh, You, I'm going through those four elements, one after the other one, and I teach you how to enter the element itself. Uh, and then the other ones are very similar. And then you work on a combination of the elements to get, to get that uh, oneness, that alignment of those four elements yourself. One thing that's needed is uh, a concentration. Now, again, I have talked about before. Uh, there are a lot of uh, groups, a lot of methods of teaching, a lot of methods of approach, which teach very much how to concentrate and that you have to stick with that same same state of mind continuously. And it takes a lot of training to do it in the brain. Our brain has simply the, the habit of wandering around. And uh, a very nice method of bypassing this is um, transactional an analysis taught something similar, is that you create basically uh, people with whom I've worked in the past, they know what I'm talking about now, that you basically work with parts of yourself. And you are go going to do that exercise with the fire element for the first time, some of you. And uh, I like to call it sometimes an artificial schizophrenia or an artificial multiple or dual, at least, personality. Both of which uh, actually, both of those uh, functions are functions of life, except it becomes morbid, schizophrenia, or, uh, or uh, uh, multiple or dual personality becomes morbid, morbid if one part doesn't know of the other, so it's, it's sort of jumping. And then you literally have a dual personality where one personality doesn't know of the other one. We constantly change as we wouldn't live. So, and some of, some of those parts of us, they become non-conscious, and that's what we are going to do. By the way, talking about this uh, lack of communication between two parts of, of oneself or schizophrenia can very, seen very easily, almost immediately, in an astrological chart. You know, of course, talking about astrological charts, those are statistical averages. But this, when you see two, two groups without mutual aspects, you can almost always uh, assume it. I recall one time when I did a chart for somebody and I said, well, there are two parts within yourself and there's not much connection between the two. And the person started laughing. Yeah, I said, he said, I'm a schizophrenic. And he knew about it and he apparently controlled it pretty well too. So he was not, no longer a clinical case or a medical case as such. He learned how to live with it rather than being upset about it, be aware of it, and then adapt to it. We, can, we all can do that. So 
of course, as a compulsive mathematician, when I talk about statistic averages, I, talk, I say any astrological statement is uh, compares to a general solution of a differential equation, you know, you need to put boundary values into it, this, besides the point here. Now, let's start with that first element, which is the fire element, or will. And now we do that practice of concentration. So, get just a concept within yourself. You, you remove yourself of all the meanings of will, be aware of the will itself. So, all, the, all those many, many meanings of what willpower is or the world of emanation and so on, I'm getting into that at a later point. Keep it on a less conscious level or a subconscious level, non-conscious level, semi-subconscious, if you like. And uh, simply have a symbol in front of you. First, and make it on the wall which opposes you, or maybe a little bit in front of that wall in thin air, and uh, see the fire first, and then, uh, I'm talking a bit more about it, and it's described very well in the thing, make a flaming triangle. Visualize it there, till you, till you almost see it in the air, with your inner eye, you don't need to physically see it, with your inner eye. If you are not that visual, feel it. If you are more kinetic, get a feeling of it. Works as well. You don't need to visualize with the eyes, just get the feeling that it's there. And uh, now, tell part of yourself, <laughs> here he comes with, the, with that method, that I mentioned before, that you stay with it and tell this part of yourself that it concentrates on this flaming triangle and builds up its energy, makes it stronger and stronger. And uh, you can just tell it and then you can go and listen to me again. Just let it do as it is. Hope you got it, you know. Visualize first and then tell part of yourself to make that visualized or felt flaming triangle stronger and stronger and stronger, even if you're not, even though you are not thinking of it anymore uh, in a few minutes. So, it's, uh, and stay, tell, tell this part of yourself to simply stay connected and strengthen it. I repeat and repeat this so that it sinks in. And uh, what I'm using here is the four elements. I'm getting a little bit into that, which have to do with the divine name. It's a typical Western symbol. We say yud heh wo -Hey, out of the Kabbalistic system. And uh, there are... Uh, It, uh, it's, it is Kabbalistic, and uh, let's get into that a little bit. The 360, the Kabbalah talks about three mothers, seven double numbers of the 22, and each one it goes with a Hebrew letter. By the way, I learned, as a 20-year-old, I learned Hebrew, and that it did make sense. Back then, I was not into magic at all. You know, I was just interested in it, and I found it fascinating. Uh, so 360 you can divide by 24 numbers. And of the 24 numbers, two of them are not figurative numbers, which means you cannot make a polygon with one corner and with two corners. So you have one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, eight, nine, ten, etc. So we have, of the 24 numbers, without, uh, without a remainder, of course, 
of the 24 numbers, two of the 24 numbers, two are not figurative numbers because you cannot make polygons with it. The other ones, you have 22 polygons which you can inscribe into this circle of 360 degrees. Regular polygons with the same length of each side. And incidentally, who knows it, we have 22 Hebrew letters. Three of them, Aleph, Mim, Shin, are so-called mothers, or Aleph, Mim, Shin. And uh, those refer to the three prime numbers. You have the three, and then actually not the two, but it's a four and the five. And the five is the first polygon you can do two ways. Number one as a pentagon and number two as a pentagram. So you have actually two letters here. The number five goes with the hey, letter hey. You have two ways of writing it. And uh, in the divine name you have the yud for the first one, the hey, for the two pentagon, pentagon pentagram, and you have the bow for the square. Now, the first element, the fire element, of course the yud, the yud that uh, is a triangle, you know. The second one would be the emotions, the water element, which is the pentagon. Piob, where I read that first time, he said it's a big secret whether the pentagram or pentagon is the water and so on. It, it is obvious because of the triangles on the pentagram, which is a combination of the two, of the pentagon and the, and the... And then you have the flow between the two, which is the air element, which is the mind. Well, uh, the pentagon is emotions, or water mind is, of course, the air element. And then you have the pentagram, which refers to consciousness or the earth element. And also that's a synthesis. We can use almost a Marxist thing I like to use at the times, the thesis, antithesis, and then the flow between the two. That doesn't, that good old Karl didn't do that. Karl Marx I talk about, not myself. But, uh, but then you have the synthesis of all the upper elements. Now, interesting is that the old Kabbalah knew only three elements, while the air element was Haruch, or the spirit. And the word spirit there means apparently something slightly different. So often, we have the same word, but the meaning shifts. Uh, and that's also very interesting, that approach, and a very valid approach as well. You, you may you may want to do a cosmic consciousness approach with this only using three elements Study The seven double ones, of course, refer to the seven planets, and it's seven numbers which you can divide by nine. So the three appears three, twice there. And that has to do also with the number of genii in, that are assigned to those planets. It was also very interesting. And then you have the 12 simple ones, which refer to the 12 signs. And somebody once wrote, that was Piob in Formulaire de Haute Magie. He wrote that everything else but simple. So that's a little bit about the Kabbalistic system. You can read it in the Cosmic Consciousness course and elsewhere. Magic of the Future, I have that. And uh, I would suggest to... You don't necessarily need to learn Hebrew or anything like this, but I would suggest to study a little bit of this, at least a little bit. It's, uh, it's our background where we grew up. And uh, now comes a little thing. You uh, go back to where you left. Look at the triangle in front of you on the wall. Become aware of it and you... I think most of people see something a lot stronger than when they left. You know, tune into it. 
so far about concentration. And it's much easier than you think because we don't need to force ourselves to stay with one thought and only one thought and block everything else out. At some point I will say how to stop thinking at all, you know, just not attach consciously to, to it anymore. I talked a lot about it to other people, which can be very relaxing, being lazy. So, look at the triangle. And now, the next thing you do is you generate a realm, you, you generate a realm outside of yourself, which connects with that creative energy of the, now generate something similar within yourself. Tune into it. Build it up. And I, I know it works very fast now. Just in your imagination, build up a triangle flaming triangle and you enter that now and you can be aware that you are entering both realms at the same time simultaneously is a better word than at the same time here and yes you can do that just by wanting it now you tuned already into that will energy the world of emanation where things come from, you set it up, it's, it's your willpower that wants something. Of course, all, all the other elements, uh, emotions, mind, consciousness are already playing with it, but your main focus is right now on the willpower, on the will. And uh, you can enter both realms now without doing an artificial splitting of your personality or whatever like this. You just tune into it. And then you can repeat to yourself re constantly about four or five times, I am a fire. Identify with the fire. Check out the element. You may have some visions of this element. You may have actually some visions which are physical or some ideas, some thoughts. Let them go. It's not... It's nice to have them. You may recall them later. They are not as crucial as they try to be. Just tune into the element itself. And of course, the ideas of what it could be can come stronger and stronger and stronger. That was the Buddha experience too. Uh, everything said, hey, I'm important. Why don't you listen to me and so on. Uh, let it go. Just tune into that willpower, into the fire element, the element of will, the world of emanation where, where things come from according to this mapping. Tune into it as such. Internally, externally, get this oneness and repeat, I am all fire, I am one with the fire. And expand this feeling to all of the senses that you have. Senses which you know of, sensory perceptions and sensory perceptions of which you may not be aware yet it comes and uh, when you have some visions they may be even illusionary look some of the new sensory perceptions, you know, clairvoyance and so on. If a person is blind from when he or she was born, and all of a sudden the person starts seeing, they see things that are not there because they have adapted to it first. And a lot of people who get that psychic sense, they, they call all of a sudden they start channeling, as they call it. It comes from the outside, but it's still illusionary stuff. And, and, uh, and uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, when it's at the beginning. Back then, uh, they had green-faced priestesses of Venus and so on. And, uh, of course, still the Russians landed there. <laughs> or similar. Uh, 
or nowadays of course similar stuff which is more in tune with today's pop science or what not. And uh, it happens naturally to people, when, to all of us, when we expand the senses, we have first a few things that are not, that are misinterpreted as such. There's nothing wrong with it. Just be aware of it and tune into it. And again, you know, you will have some fire experiences. You may have some with, with other sensory perceptions of which you are not aware yet. Call it remote viewing, whatever. And don't worry about it. Just repeat, I'm all fire and I'm all one. I'm one. I'm discontinuing now for a few minutes. Uh, takes that advantage of putting another, another DVD into the camera and then I'm going on with the other elements. You stay tuned with the fire element and if you feel like uh, call me, I gave you the phone number in the next five minutes or ten minutes that I give or then or wait with a call till later and then after this, after I stop this, I'll be still available for a good hour for private calls. I know they will come. Here, is, here are the phone numbers again. The top one is for me, the second one below is uh, for John, if you cannot reach me for some reason. If I talk with somebody else, John can answer as well. We are going now into the other three elements and at the same time we are going to combine them one by one. And uh, let's go first or next, so to say, not first, first with the second part, into the second element which is water, emotions the astral world with, uh, with the mapping of, uh, of uh, material, astral, mental, and uh, the world of emanation, I like to call it, spiritual, whatever. You know, spiritual is everything to me. So I, I don't, you know, I have, I have a different approach here in some ways. And it's just different words. With the people who use those words, we are probably thinking very much the same. So let's go to the second element, the water element, which is emotions. The astral, if you like to work with the astral, if you don't, you know, if you, if I use, if you use other, uh, other world images such and other world mapping, which seems more useful to you, you don't need to use the term astral at all. You know, it's, uh, it's an objective reality. It's, it's I said, I, I emphasize it's a objective reality. There are more objective realities than living beings of the universe. Uh, personally, I'm shifting from a purely materialistic point of view to a animistic point of view when I do a evocation because it is more useful there. Even so, I could do it with both mappings. Anyway, or with both objective approaches. And if I do a if I do, a, let's say, a miracle healing, then I can easily identify with uh, groups or ideas where it is practiced mostly. For instance, the charismatic church. No problem at all. To me, it's just as valid. Of course, the people of those churches don't reciprocate that uh, courtesy to me. And that's fine too, that's their, their problem, not mine. In any case, let's go into the second element of emotions. Now do the same thing that you did before. While I'm talking, you build up that water element around you, maybe in front of the wall again, 
But do it, uh, we don't have wall on our four corners. Do it, go clockwise to the left side, counterclockwise, I mean to the left side. Do it behind yourself, do it to the left side, wherever. I prefer the left side, you can do it to the right as well. It doesn't matter how you arrange those elements for it. And, uh, or you can do it in front again. And uh, let's do it in front right now. You do it in front and, and it be, be then one where the fire element was. Now that part of yourself, keep the fire element there. Remove, remove the part from yourself. Just let it build it up further. And at the same place, build up the water element. You see water. You see that pentagram. Pentagon, excuse me, Pentagon. It's not the star, it's not the five-pointed star, it's a polygon with five corners. And you see water there. And you see things that relate to the emotions, to the emotional world. And then, while you see those things, can remove yourself, you know they are wandering around, you don't need to identify with them. They come, they are there. And then you do the same thing you did before with the fire element. I am all water. Water and I am one. Emotions and I are one. And now comes the thing, since you build it up inside yourself now, within yourself. In your imagination, first you had it on the outs outside you, and now you build something in the realm within. Very similar. The pentagon with the water. And it's all together. Tune into it. And the two worlds are one. And then you connect that interior up exterior with the interior exterior of the fire. And you have a connection between fire and water, will and emotions, world of emanation with the world of formation, the water element. And you can repeat the sentences if it's similar to autogenic training, which I did before. Uh, I'm all fire. I'm all water. Fire and water are one. I'm one. Develop your own formulas here, which you like best. I give you ideas and it really comes then down that you develop your own. Now this goes very quickly and I hope you have that transfer on you. If you don't have it on you, it's okay. You automatically connect it and you pull that energy. Even so, if it's still that two feet away from you, I forgot to tell you to do it. But put it in your pocket, put it on you. And now the next thing is the air element, which link those two elements, fire and water. It's like that interaction, the flow between the world of formation and the world of emanation, between fire and water, between will and emotions. It's a mind. It's a mental power. And it's a world of creation. The mind creates continuously. We are doing it right now by opening up to other impacts, by opening up to other sensory perceptions. They come almost automatically with that oneness experience. You may let them develop. You may just say that's not as important right now. 
I'm going somewhere else. Long ago, I worked on, uh, that's, those are mind expressions. The mind decides it very often. I worked on remote viewing. I had some fantastic experiences. Uh, I saw some landscapes which I did where, where I wandered in the mountains. You know, I come from the mountains, from the Alps. And uh, I saw them later. I saw some Gothic cathedral, some towers, you know, which I saw exactly later. And something extremely spiritual. I saw a Donald Duck movie, which I saw a couple of years later. Of course, it existed already. And maybe one of my favorite jokes, you know. <laughs> Donald Duck cartoon, I mean, I saw in my remote viewing thing. And it was, it was funny when I finally, oh, I know that movie. <laughs> I know that cartoon. I saw it already. So it was pretty neat. I decided not to, even so, I, I have that remote viewing when I clear people. I know what's going on and so on. I still have it. I, I decided to go in another direction, and that was my decision I did back then. And you may go in the direction of, of viewing more than, than acting more. We have a, we are not as humans, we are not as far evolved as we would like to be, that we can carry it in faster. Of course, uh, I didn't have my equipment. I may have done it faster if I had had my equipment a few, a few decades earlier. Took me longer. So, visualize that square now with air in it. You can imagine moving air or whatever. You know, clouds even, of course. Whatever air movement, existing air, and uh, build it up within yourself. Now you put that square at the same point, at the, in the same space, so to say, in front of you, where you have already the other two elements, but now the other two go into parts of yourself. While this one, the air element, you are conscious of. And now you build the air element up within yourself, a similar way, a square with the air, and you move into it, you likely have some visions of what's in the air element. It may be very trivial what you see, it doesn't matter, it's there. Mind-related. I talked about mind-related stuff while I was, at the same time as I was talking, I was focusing, and I was surprised at what came out uh, when talking about it, because it was some, some mental stuff. I, I fell actually victim to, to my teaching here. <laughs> nice, I mean victim, not necessarily. <laughs> I took advantage of my teaching without knowing it. And... Uh, Build it up within yourself. Connect it outside with the inside. And now comes say, I am all mind. You know, be aware there is a thought universe which you can perceive. You, of course, partly you can say your brain creates thought, but you can also see the brain as a sensory organ that perceives thoughts which opens up a totally new world. It's a different way of looking at something. And if you look at things differently, new worlds open up naturally. New technologies open up. So, now you connect the three. I am all fire. You have the fire. I am all water. I am all air. Fire air and water are one. You noticed how I shifted air water? Do it as you feel. And it's within and outside. And that inside and outside there may be a spatial distance, it's one. Will, mind, emotions are one. I'm one. 
It's me. And the next one, of course, what else? Is a pentagram. Damn, I mixed it up again. <laughs> and it's a word of forms. Consciousness, the earth element. perceive the world as you perceive it, as you touch it, as you feel it. And the word, the earth, is, uh, is a nice word for it. And you see that pentagram, and you are aware the pentagram is a pentagon inside, and then the five triangles of the will outside. So emotions will. The square is somewhere connecting them. Some people in the old times, they made a pentagram with a cross inside, which refers to the square, the four elements, or the mind. Two and two. As such, it's a dual prime number, because the two is not figurative. They had to take the four. It's just one way of looking. Build that pentagram, put the three into three parts of yourself now, and now form the pentagram. Again, the same place in thin air, where the other three elements are already. I'm deviating here from my course, by the way. The people who read it may notice it, and they also may notice the difference. You see air in it, uh, you see earth in it. Whichever way you like to imagine earth. You can also start seeing forms, a lot of forms in it. And build up the same thing within yourself now, the world of forms. You can repeat, you almost don't need to repeat anymore because the process becomes very much a process of experiencing that you are one with the earth element and you are one and it's you and now pull those other three parts into it you have the four not as individual ones it's just one set. Will, emotions, mind and consciousness are one. I am one. Interesting enough, I did it like the famous blessing, <laughs> except I did it flat with my hand language. That too, I did it for a first time right now. I also did that putting the elements all in one at the, for the first time, and it appeared to me a lot more powerful than having it in the, like in the circle as I described in the course. And you build up that oneness outside and within yourself. Stay tuned with it. And at this, I am uh, saying goodbye. And you stay tuned as long as you like. And you build that up very similar. I'm going to do something very similar with the runes at some point, and I call it creative energies. Check it out. different system is a very similar approach. Have a great evening and feel free to call me. <laughs>